Deutsche! Let me see. Let me see. Deutsche! Y'all better act up today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Y'all take a seat. And I'm gonna figure out how I can sit. Some dresses are not made for sitting, okay? But we're gonna figure this thing out today. Let me catch my breath. And sometimes you gotta toot out here like this. And you make it if you can, okay? All right. <laughs> welcome to the show, okay? Y'all welcome to my home. You see me taking it slow. Okay, I think I'm sitting down. Is that all right? Woo! Y'all, you know I call this my home. So thank y'all for stopping by to look me upside the head. I got a lot of folks at my front door today. <laughs> I hope y'all feeling comfortable. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Meanwhile, I show you my mug. It says Hollywood. Y'all see that? Yeah. Uh, and child on the back, it says home of the stars. Ain't that something? I'ma take that. This is a true J Hood mug. I need my sip. Hold the line, hold the line. <sighs> Woo, child, that walk with me out. <sighs> All right, I think I'm ready now, y'all. Did anybody watch the Grammys this weekend? <laughs> Baby, it was an incredible night. I wanna say congratulations to all the winners and all the nominees too, okay? Yeah. You know, because like that's a big deal to just be nominated, you know what I mean? And too often we, forgot, we forget to congratulate the nominees as well. So congratulations to all the nominees as well as the winners of the Grammys. Child, I had a big old weekend, cause it wore me out. Because see, that's why I picked this mug that says Hollywood, because like everything I do is within Hollywood, right? And so like doing the talk show, and then there's the Grammys, that's the original world I come from. And I had to sing for Clive Davis pre-Grammy party this weekend. <laughs> in honor of the late, great Miss Whitney Houston and paying tribute to her. <laughs> and. So for me, it's like blending of the worlds because you know, I just started out the whole talk show space and that's, that's familiar to me because we'll talk your head off of my family or we'll sing your head off. But it was interesting to have to blend the worlds. So one minute I'll be talking and all of a sudden I'll be like, the great, oh wait, hold on. Because my wheels are spinning as a musician. So I will be rehearsing that song and then next second I'll be talking to you. You know what I mean? So it was, it was a cool experience to experience it in a different way. By one second, I'll be like, which Jennifer am I today? Am I talking to you or am I singing? But I got to do both, you know? <laughs> Coming off of the show and Clive, you know, he gave his call. Jennifer, <laughs> he gonna get me for this. I, I think you should do the tribute to Whitney Houston at the pre-Grammy. And y'all know I love Whitney, so I was like, yes, sir, I will be there with bells on, okay? <laughs> to sing, yeah, the, the, this moment for me, because she is who I got my first Grammy from. You know? <laughs> Imagine being a young girl singing Whitney Houston songs, looking up to her and aspiring to be that. And the first Grammy I received is from Whitney Houston, which for me ended up outshining winning the Grammy. I was like, Lord, this is Whitney Houston giving me this Grammy. You know what I mean? So that's what comes to my mind when I think of the Grammys, Miss Whitney Houston. So I had to be there to sing in tribute to her. Because I want to say it would have been the 10th or the 11th year anniversary of her passing, first of all. And then, you know, she just had the movie. Uh, I Wanna Dance With Somebody yeah. was released yeah. as well. And it's so many musical legends and icons that blessed us with their entire gifts, their entire lives. And they de deserve to be celebrated. And so I always love to make a point to celebrate my favorites. And I think we all should because they contributed their whole lives to entertaining us. <laughs> and that's why the Grammys is still so important. But honey, it wears me out every time, especially blending those worlds. So on Sunday, 
I said, nah, I ain't, I'm gonna go sit on that good old couch. And I ain't gonna, I ain't put on no gown either. But sometimes I be sitting there when I'm at those programs dreaming about sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> watching the awards. So that's what we did. We had us a good old, like, kind of like a little Grammy watch party. You know, family and friends and music heads and lovers. And we watched all the guests, like, who you think gonna win? Who you think gonna win? You know, who's performing and things like that. So that's what I did on Sunday. Watched the performances of the Grammys and then sang for the pre-Grammy and sat on their couch in my little snuggled upness with my good old blanket, my good old cup. Probably, you, I was all mushed up watching the Grammys and I had a great time with that. You had Harry Styles, Lizzo, Mary J. Blige that took the stage. Yes, oh, and another fun thing that I got to do was I celebrate the 50th anniversary of hip hop with my friends at MasterCard over the weekend. Oh my God. See, so guys, this is so important to me. I want to share this with you. So I know you, if you've been watching the show, you know about our partnership with MasterCard and their Strivers Initiative highlighting black women business owners. <laughs> so we've built a pop-up Strivers experience for our audience to support and learn more about these businesses. If you want to learn more, go to the JenniferHudsonShow.com. We have a great show, y'all. We'll be right back. I'm so excited for our first guest. She's a super talented actress and director starring in the Amazon series Harlem. Please welcome the beautiful Megan Good. Yeah. Oh my God. Right? Thank you. Do you feel the love? Isn't she beautiful, y'all? Oh my goodness. Do you feel the love? We love I you so much. I do feel the love. Oh I do. I appreciate it, y'all. Oh my God. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, yes. Wow. So you've been acting like almost like your whole life, right? Pretty much. I started at like four years old as a hobby. And then by the time I was uh, 13 is when I was like, okay, no, I'm serious about this. Wow. I want to make this my career. And you got yes. your first speaking role at 12? Yes. Actually, uh, well, yeah, 12, 13. It was uh, in Friday. Wow. Yeah. And <laughs> so you were in Friday? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is such a classic. Like, yeah. do, what do you remember from it? Oh, man, I remember it was F. Gary Gray's first film. He was 25. 25? Um, oh, yeah, he was, he was a baby. And, um, you know, everything was crazy, a little bit disorganized. So I was on set for, like, two and a half weeks before I ever even got on camera. And I remember just, um, <laughs> I used to make tuna sandwiches for Tiny Lester and... <laughs> And I remember, and so Michael Clark Duncan was actually Tiny Lester stand-in. And rest in peace to both of those sweet babies. Yes. Um, and I remember I would um, make tiny sandwiches, and one day Michael was like, where's my sandwich? <laughs> I said, I said, well, you didn't ask me to make you one. He was like, well, I, I will take one. I was like, okay, I'll go make you one. He said, let me tell you something. And I said, yeah. He said, remember, from this point on in your career, make sure that you always treat everybody exactly the same. Mm. You know, he was like, you look them yeah. in the eye, you make them feel seen, and you treat everybody the same. And that really stuck with me as a kid. And, and I've always done that since day one. And, you know, to me, I, I feel like being kind is, is an authentic thing for me. And I feel like authenticity is my superpower. And so I just I try love to... That. Love on people, even you know when they're not that nice. Yes, I feel like yes. that's important. You know what? That, I feel like that goes hand in hand to something I always say. My one of my directors told me it's not always about how good you are, but how good you are to work with. Yeah, and I, I'd imagine that's why you've had yes. such longevity. You know what I mean? Thank because you. you're always so kind and good to everybody. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah. makes a huge, huge difference. It's important. Okay. So you work with one of my ultimate favorite people ever, Jamie Foxx. Yeah! <laughs> and I love me some Snoop Dogg, too. Yeah. You was in the movie Day Shift? I was in Day Shift, oh, man. That, that was one of those things. Um, shout out to my brother, Jatari Turner, as well, but who produced it. Uh, but it was one of those things where, where a vampire movie was like on my bucket list. Mm. And Jamie went to bat for me, JJ went to bat for me, and to be able to get a chance to work with him was like amazing. He's such a light and such a sweet spirit. Snoop, I love, yes. I've known him for years, love to pieces. And um, 
so yeah, you know, they're, they're saying that it, uh, it's looking like it might be a trilogy. Oh. So I'm like, you know, I'm over here doing my little Thai bow and my Muay Thai <laughs> and my capoeira. Because I'm trying to get in on the action. I'm trying to be blade part. Oh, oh that is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Wow, you get some good roles, honey. Thank you. Playing the superhero in Shazam? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> How does that feel? Oh man, you know what's crazy is, is this is one of those things that was like, God just came all the way through. I was like, I wanna be in the Marvel DC, like I wanna be a superhero, I want, for little black girls to be able to see themselves. Right. Because, yes. you know, there wasn't enough of us at that time. And mm -hmm. so um, I was sitting on the couch and I'm eating a little chip. And at the time when, when Devon and I were married, he said, well, what are you doing to meet God halfway? And I said, "Wow, right, faith without works is dead. Come on. Where are my works? Because I have the faith. Yes. So I started working out from that point forward, five days a week, an hour and a half a day with my trainer, uh, Mike T. And about a year, <laughs> a year and a half later, I go in for this audition. And it's funny, because I made this video as an affirmation this video. This yeah. was before. So you spoke it into existence. So, yes, I literally, and that's my pose, my superhero Darla pose, too. But I did this, and the video says, believe all things are possible. Yeah. And I did this while I was working out. And then I, I get this audition. And they're like, you're gonna be like a 10 year old. I was like, well, what is it for? And they're like, you just have to be like a kid. I was like, well, that's easy. So <laughs> I go in there, I do the audition. Two weeks later, they call me, they're like, you got the job. I was like, great, what is it? <laughs> and they're like, it's, it's Shazam. And I was like, like with Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> and they were like, no, Shazam. And I was like, with Sinbad? And they were like, no. So then I went and I researched and I was like, oh my gosh, she literally is a 10 year old little girl. Little girls can literally see themselves in this yes. character because she is them. Yes. You know? yeah. Oh, I love it so yes. much. Wow. Oh, and you got to meet your personal show business hero. Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh my goodness. I love Halle Berry so much. I love her too. Like, I do. She is. Don't you love her? I just do. And um, it's funny, it was the week that I was getting married, I saw her at this restaurant, uh -huh. and I was like, oh, should I say something? I was like, no, I don't wanna bother her. And I was like, maybe I should, okay, I'm gonna say something when she gets done eating. And I went over to her, I was like, hi. I was like, I'm Megan. And she was like, I know who you are. Wow. And I was like, oh. And I was like, um, I was like, I love you so much. Like, you've been such an inspiration to me. I, I know that you've gone through so many things, like publicly and privately and in your career, and you're just so strong, blah, blah. And then she was just like, and she got emotional, and then I got emotional. First I got emotional, then she got emotional because I got emotional. And she just was so sweet. And then, like, two years later, she started following me on Instagram, and she comments on my pictures, and um, we share the same makeup artist. Shout out to Jorge back there. Oh, wow. Um, and, he, and he was saying, you know, that she was, like, wanting to know should she reach out to me when I was going through my divorce. And so I was just like, that's really sweet that, you know, that there was a lot of support and love. She's so. one of a kind. That is for sure. I can be late. Yeah. Your first major role was in Ease by You. Yeah. What was it like working with the cast? Oh man, Ease by You. It's crazy because originally, <laughs> originally uh, I had did the table read when I was ten, and I was uh -huh. playing Eve. And so I thought the movie was gonna like start shooting next week. So I would call Casey. I'd be like, Hey, Miss Casey, when do we start shooting? She's like, Oh, honey, we're raising the money. So a year goes by, I'm like, hey, Miss Casey, when are we doing the movie? She's like, we're still raising the money. Cut to four years later, I'm like, well, now I'm 14. I was like, I have to play Cicely. Oh. I have to play Cicely. And so when Journey came off of um, Full House, they gave her her own TV show. And Miss mm -hmm. Janet, her mom said, well, you gotta put all my kids on the show. So the show was called On Our Own. And I came on that show as a guest star. So when Journey came into the audition, I was like, oh, she's so good. This is gonna be great because we know what it is to have sisters right. and you know. You already so, kind of had a bun. Yeah, and uh -huh. so we we had this like kind of just amazing audition. And then when she left, Casey was like, it's gonna be her. Now we just gotta find our Poe. And I was like, you know, she has a little brother named Jake that's the same exact age as Poe. <laughs> and she was like, what? So she went out there to inquire about him, and he was sitting in the lobby. So we all got to you know do it together, and then. Um, they left, and I just told Miss Casey, I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta use the bathroom. So I run down the street, and I chase their van, I'm big on the side of the van, and Miss Jen is like, what, what, what? I was like, they got the job, I just wanted you to know. <laughs> I was like, I don't want y'all to have to wait, you know? So yeah. Oh! Will you stick yeah. around and hang out a little bit? Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so happy you're here. More with Megan, <laughs> we'll be right back! I was going for my run this morning. I couldn't stop repaying all the I cost last night. Y'all all catch that? I went for a run this morning, backdoor brand. I caught it. But does that mean that you regret kissing Ian last night? No. 
No, I just don't want Ian and I to start again under the shadow of all this chaos, you know? I can't even imagine how upset his parents are with me. Did I quit my job last night? What? Wait, Quinn, you told me to quit my job last night. How much did y'all have to drink? Why are you giving up career advice? I can fix this. All you need is a taxi backsy. <laughs> Would make it good. Talk to us about the hit show Harlem and who you play. Uh, Harlem is a show about four women in their 30s trying to navigate life and relationships and sex and careers and everything. And it has been like uh, such a blessing to be a part of this show because mm -hmm. I love these girls. Yes, it seems so like my, it. I do. It's so crazy because. Grace and I, we had met a few years prior, mm -hmm. and literally, literally I did this um, sit, and, sit and sip show that she does, and when we were done, we talked for like three hours, she was like, man, she's like, I wish we could do a show together. I was like, no, me too, girl. Cut to two years later, I go in, um, and I meet on Camille. I don't hear anything for two weeks. I hear that they're auditioning other people, and I'm like, well, can I come in and audition? They were like, you wanna audition? I'm like, yes, I wanna fight for this character. And I remember I called Grace, and I was like, Grace, she was like, oh, bitch, tell me you go to me. I was like, yes. <laughs> and so we studied together. <laughs> we, uh, we did, we like literally studied the scenes, practiced what we were gonna do, planned everything out for the audition, down to like some twerking we did at the end together. <laughs> and, and then, um, you know, going to the audition, Tracy had said that she saw that Camille in her mind would have like braids. So I sat through 11 hours of braids <laughs> for my audition. And then I called Regina Hall and I was like, girl, help me because I think that you are the best. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh my God, I would love to. She was like, but you don't need it. I was like, no, but girl, I'm trying to glean everything and I appreciate that I can even call you. She's like, I appreciate that you even wanted to call me. And nope. it's so funny, I think it gave her more joy yes. to help me, you know? Yeah. So anyway, so we had that moment, we ran it. She gave me one thing that I was like, ooh, this might work in the audition and I did it in the audition. And then when I got there, I run into Shaniqua mm -hmm. and she's like, do you remember me? I was like, from where? And she's like, Five years ago, we were on FaceTime together. You were working on Minority Report with a, a mutual friend of mine, and I said to you, one day we're gonna do a show together. And you said, we're gonna claim it in Jesus' name, and we touched and agreed on the FaceTime. And I was like, wait, wait, what, that was you? So then we ended up in the bathroom, like, crying and praying over each other that we would both get the job, and then walked in, met Jerry Johnson, and Jerry Johnson was a force. And I was just like, I love this girl. And from the moment that I left there, it was, you know, it was a done deal. And it has been my quality of life. Because when you, when you do a TV show, you know, you're there for like five yes. months. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to work, you're going to do life. And you're doing that life so with these true. people. Yeah. And, and you want your quality of life to be amazing. And right. mine is so amazing with them and, and Tracy and Scott and Mimi and everybody. I just love it, all of it. That yeah. is beautiful. <laughs> Listen, honey, you speak everything into existence. Amen. That's Thank amazing. You. Do you feel like you have similarities to your character at all? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Camille is like, she's very quirky, a little bit offbeat. She's definitely the girl that like tells a joke and everyone's like, no. <laughs> no, oh, that is my entire life. So um, it's fun to play a character that is a lot more like me mm -hmm. than, than people would know. And, um, and I think that's initially why they thought I probably wasn't right for Camille because mm -hmm. I've played like the love interest and the girl next door, da 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 da. And I'm like, no, I'm a nerd, you guys, you don't understand. I'm so awkward. And so um, it's, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Love that. <laughs> The show deals with various mental health issues. Yes. Why is that important to you, you know, for our community? Because I think that we need to, I think we're starting to talk about it more now, mm -hmm. but I think that there is so much mental health crisis going on, especially after the pandemic, but right. really, especially as black people, because of what is constantly going on in the world, damn near every day. And then also the way that you show up in the world, you know, from, from microaggressions to, you know, uh, you know, even like uh, with, with Shazam, like I, in order for me to get that job, I had to show up a certain way. I had to be, you know, working out for a year and a half to even get that opportunity. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think it's important that we talk about these things and we encourage each other and we say that there's no shame. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you need medication, if you need support, if you need therapy, and then also just conversations about what's happening in the medical field and how women are you know, being overlooked. There's a, a young lady who passed away the other day. She was having her second baby. I think she was like 27 and she told them like that something's going on. They're like, you're okay. And she passed away. 
you know, and you, you look at like what Serena Williams went through, right. you know, and it's like, yeah. it's, it's constantly the attitude of, well, you're strong. Yes, yes, we are strong, but that doesn't mean that we don't need to be taken care of right. too, and you know? Oh my God. Thank you so much for being here. You're one of our heroes, sheroes. You are everything. We love you so much. Will you come back again and I see will. us? I will. We love I'm you like so hero, much. You my hero, <laughs> hero. We love you. Be sure to watch new episodes of Harlem season two. We've been partnering with MasterCard to shine a light on incredible black women business owners. Our next guest turned her passion for coding into a business that creates virtual worlds inside the metaverse. Please welcome Runda X. Come on out. I'm so excited to be here. We're so happy to have you. Thank okay, you. we want to learn all about this. You started your own tech company. Tell us what your business does. Yes, so RxVR Brands is a virtual reality company and I basically build virtual reality worlds in the metaverse for companies like MasterCard. And in the, these worlds you can play, you can interact, you can have fun, you can pretty much do anything in virtual reality. Like you can't jump off a cliff in real life, but you can do it in VR, so. Mm. <laughs> oh, you could do things you didn't think you could do, y'all hear lot. that? So the metaverse is amazing, explain, um, oh, that look, yeah, you look like yourself, girl. <laughs> The Bantu Knots, that's like my alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well the metaverse is amazing. Can you explain what it is to everyone? Yes, so it's like another social media, except it's super immersive. You can be inside this headset with friends that live across the country. Mm. Imagine being at a Jennifer Hudson concert from your living room with your bestie and you're just jamming Whoa. out. We could do that? Yes! Oh my God! <laughs> yes. Oh. You can even watch one of your movies with your bestie from across the country. Like, you could do anything. And you're there together. Yes. I love this. Have you always been into the tech industry? Oh, well, it's crazy because um, I had a salon industry in Atlanta, and then I was also, like, an actress. But then when COVID hit, all of that just shut down. And I was, like, I was scared. I was like, what am I going to do? Right. So I was like, okay, I need to find something that I can do from my phone or at home. And I started doing research and then the whole metaverse talk started happening and the crypto little boom. Mm -hmm. So I bought a headset, uh, the Meta VR headset, and it was up from there. Like I got into the Meta Horizon platform and I was like, oh my goodness, these people are running up to me. Who is this person? Like, it was so weird because it's like spatial sounds. You can hear people from over there. You can like tap people and give people high fives. You can, you, you can roll your eyes and people can see it. So be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, be careful. But it's just something that took my senses to a whole nother level. And I was addicted and I'm glad I was. It sounds <laughs> addictive in a yeah. good way. <laughs> so you're building a virtual world. How do you do that? So you're given this headset and uh -huh. then you go into the platform and the good thing about Meta Horizon Worlds is the software is in the app and you learn it from there and uh, you're given these polygons, you're given these different textures and you can just build a door, you can build anything and you do that from the headset. You don't have to download any additional software and the good thing is the language, because a lot of the, you know, when you talk tech, it just gets a little like weird and if you're not familiar with it, it's intimidating but the language is in headset and everyone learns it from scratch. It's learnable, it's super, you have the code blocks. Anyone can literally get into it. That's why I love it and that's why I support it. Mm, you seem very passionate about I, it. I, I can this. feel your passion. I love it. So what was it like when you first learned how to do it? When I first learned, I was, uh, I was a little intimidated because I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me that was good at it. Mm. But then when I realized that the people that did real big software development. They were learning at the same level that I was learning. I was like, oh girl, if you don't nail this, it's your fault. <laughs> Learn it from scratch and do it because they're doing it. And then so many people that just look like me are just in the platform, just thriving and winning. And I just love it. And you're winning too, baby. Thank you. I want to keep learning more about this. So can we hang on to you for a minute? Yes. All right, we'll be right back with Rhonda A. Now, I actually got to visit the small business city you built for MasterCard. Tell us about it. And that was so cool because I got to meet you in person for the first time there. So that was super <laughs> cool. But <laughs> this is fun. Small Business City is MasterCard's world that I built with them to highlight their entrepreneur strivers. And in there, you can um, get yourself educated on their businesses. You can play mini games. You can hang out with your friends. You can do so much. And I just 
Love Massacar for highlighting the small business owners in there. Yes, it's, it, it, it's a cool experience. You want to experience this, okay. What is it like knowing that the small businesses will get exposure thanks to the work you're doing with MasterCard? I love that because it's very important for black women business owners right. to just have their voice amplified. Yeah. And that's what MasterCard does. Yes. Yes. MasterCard does a good job MasterCard at that. MasterCard really does. Yes, because we need to be at the top making these decisions so it's not being made for us. Thanks. And when you have women in tech, let alone black women in mm -hmm. tech on, at the top, then we do not have to worry about the inequalities. Like, it's right. fair. And we have such brilliant minds that deserve help, support, a platform. Because look at you, you're doing great things. How does it feel knowing you're blazing the trail for women in the tech industry? That's awesome. I'm at the Jennifer Hudson <laughs> show, like. <laughs> yes, you are. It's a lot, but it just gives me so much confidence and I'm just so excited to just do something that I love. Right. Like, I don't have to leave my house and I have a full-time career in a headset. I can't believe it, like. <laughs> you dreamt up the dream. Well, I love what you're doing and so does MasterCard. The work you're doing is incredible and MasterCard wants to help you, help you have the tools and the resources to help your business thrive. So that's why they are giving you $25,000, girl! Here it is! small business owners. For more information about Small Business City, go to mastercard.com slash small business city. Wow. Rhonda, thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. You are shining bright, Girl. honey. Congratulations. Thank you. And welcome to the Jennifer Hudson Show. Tell them we'll be right back. Now, usually I get all up in my audience business, but we decided to pull a Uno reverse today. So let's hear some questions from my audience. Who's first? Hello. Hello. How are you? What's your name and where are you from? My name is Fanta. Oh. I'm from France. Nice. <laughs> oh my, what's your question? And my question for you is, what is your favorite candle smell and why? Well, girl, I can't cook, right? <laughs> So I like things that smell like home, right? Like I'm cooking, you know? So I like the stuff like uh, anything that has vanilla scent, chocolate scent, you know, like I'm baking a cookie or something and ain't baking nothing, girl. <laughs> so candles like that, that's my favorite scent. Thank you. <laughs> Who's next? What's your name and where are you from? My name is Susan. I'm from Glendale, California. Hi, Susan. So Jennifer, I know you have a teenage son. What is one activity you would still like to do with David that you have not yet done? Ooh, well we do everything together. He into basketball, I'm into basketball. We ride bikes, we, I'm an active mom. But we love, love, love some animals. Um, mm. I would like to probably go whale watching. I've never done that and I think that would be something really nice for us to do. Awesome. So that's what I would say. Thank you. Who else we got? Hi, what's your name and where are you from? Hello, my name is Frederica. I'm right oh. here from Los Angeles. How are you? <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> yes, now I know what mine looks like, but I'm wondering, what does your perfect Sunday look like? Ooh, well, I normally like to go to church. Right. Yes. Um, let's see, and outside of that, that's probably one of the only days I do get to sleep. Okay. okay. And you know, we supposed to rest on the, on the seventh day, right? All right, yeah. Amen. So I try to get a little rest in. I do like to watch something good on the television. All right. So I like to ask the kids, what should I watch? And then I say, y'all come on here and fix this TV for me. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time on Sundays is when I get my nails done. Oh, that's good. So that's another something I do. And I don't cook, so I light them candles. <laughs> okay? <laughs> what is your Sunday like? Exactly, right? So church first. Yes, ma'am. Waffle second. Oh, okay. Movies. Texting the best friend. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like catching up with people, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. See what they're getting up those businesses. See, like, what's y'all out there doing? You know what I mean? Exactly, in that order. Yes, there you go. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. How what's are you? your name and where are you from? I'm Brianne. I'm from Fairfield, California. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brianne. 
What's your question? Um, you look amazing, by the way. Thank you. Thank <laughs> uh, you. My question for you was, um, when's the last time you had to wait in line for something? <laughs> Girl, listen, I'm a shopper. So, you know what else I do on, on the weekends? We target bandits. <laughs> Me, my son, and all his cousins, we go in Target. And I be picking up everything, okay? I do. <laughs> but look, everybody loves Jennifer until you standing in line behind me. You do not want to do that. They be like, okay, ma'am, how many cards do you have? So probably, you know, the last time I was in Target, I was standing in line. But then it's good. If I'm gonna buy these kids all this stuff, no, y'all gonna stand in this line. Okay. <laughs> you see? Exactly. You see? Cause I'm still Mama Hood now. <laughs> okay. That was a good one. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Hello. Hi. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Joanne. I'm from San Diego. Mm, thank you for being here. What's your question? Well, if you had only one song, one song, Ooh, that try. you could sing for the rest of your life, what would it be? One. That is the hardest question in the world. Oh, my God. Like, I could answer anything. Ooh, jeez. Hold on. Uh, well, my favorite song, and my favorite songs to sing, is Hallelujah. Yeah. So I would have to say, Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Whew, yes. That would be the pick. I would be happy to sing that for the rest of my Perfect. life. Okay. Yes. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.